Hey everybody, it's Video Bob, and uh, here's a video about something I didn't think I would ever do. Um, Wagyu steak. Now, I don't. The people who know me know that I love steak. Every Sunday, I grill up some big ribeyes, and up until now, my favorite has been Costco sells a prime ribeye that I just think is divine. It's and you're gonna spend as much as twenty dollars a pound on it. Recently, I went to Las Vegas and I went to the top of the world restaurant at the Stratosphere with my friend Jared Gwines and we sat down and we tried Wagyu steak for the first time and it was $30 an ounce. It was $90 for this little bitty puck of meat and it was really good. Then I tried a different lower grade of Wagyu beef which was uh, an Australian grass-fed uh, cut of beef and I think it was about 80 or 90 bucks for maybe a maybe an eight ounce piece or something. So Wagyu beef is really expensive. And I think that you already know about Kobe and Wagyu and what it is. And basically these are cows that are just treated to the lap of luxury and they're massaged and they're, they're, they don't do a lot of walking around and they're fed a special diet. And what this does is this makes them really fat, like me. If you were to slice me up, I'd probably be prime grade, uh, uh, grade A Wagyu Bob. Uh, cause, uh, I don't move around a lot either. Anyway, so a friend of mine, uh, recommended this. They're, they're called, uh, Mishima Reserve. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Please forgive me if I'm not. This is not a true unboxing cause I already opened the box and I wasn't going to make a video about this. I wasn't planning on making a video about this, but I was so impressed by how this whole process worked, I thought I wanted to share it with you because I thought, you know, I bet people have never done this and they're wondering how this works. This is not a paid endorsement. I paid full price for this. Uh, they haven't given me anything. Matter of fact, I paid a fortune for it. And um, let's, and I didn't order a whole lot, okay? Well, I, I just wanted to try this stuff out. They gave me a little packet of uh, seasoning blend. It's very nice of them. Uh, salt, garlic, lemon peel, onion, chili powder, black pepper, rosemary, anise seed, fennel seed, lapsang, souchong, black tea. Uh, pretty standard stuff. And of course, this doesn't have my paid invoice. I want to say I paid almost 200 bucks. I want to say it was like a $189. Now they ship this really quickly, obviously, because it's frozen meat. You get, you get this like foam padding here. Now, uh, I've already taken, there was a, they were wrapped in some paper. I already took the paper off. But you've got a bag of, uh, of, of dry ice in here. And let me tell you, these things are frozen. So, um, any concerns about the process of how they ship these? Don't be, don't be worried. Matter of fact, and the FedEx person, I'm, you know, I recently just did a video about how I was pissed off at UPS and FedEx. I put on the instructions for the FedEx driver to put them on my back porch. She threw them in the bushes. Putting it in your bushes. Anyway, what I ordered was, uh, I, I wanted to try some of the cheaper lower grade stuff and maybe that's a bad strategy, but I just didn't want to spend a ton of money. So I had gotten this, this is ground Wagyu beef and uh, it says humanely raised, no hormones added, extraordinary flavor. Um, and I, I don't, I think that this, I want to say this was for like 15 bucks, which is still a lot for a, like a pound of hamburger. Um, but it's Wagyu, so that's got to be good. That's going to be some pretty awesome hamburger helper. Imagine you make your stroganoff, a $2 box of Hamburger Helper Stroganoff with Wagyu beef. That would be, that would be awesome actually. Uh, I got these other two cuts that are called, uh, and I've never heard of this. This is called a Zabuton. Am I saying that correctly? Zabuton? Uh, Gesundheit. Th these are, you know, two little strip type fillets here. And again, frozen solid. These are eight ounces each. And, um, and, and and when we follow up on the video, we're gonna get to see some of the really good close-ups of, um, you know, but you could see the, the marbling in there, pretty impressive. So this is gonna be a multi-part video because Sunday when I cook these, uh, to, today is Wednesday, uh, when I cook these in a couple of days, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna film that whole process. 
These are two four-star eye of ribeye, eight ounces a piece. Can't really tell because, you know, man, these things are really cold, really frozen, but you can see the marbling in there, you know, and that's what makes it good. So they sold several different um, qualities of, of, of this. They had four-star, five-star, and then I think it was called like the maximum or premium or whatever it was. I want to say I paid, I think I paid about 180 bucks or something for this little box. It's expensive. I mean, uh, you know, Wagyu steak is, is, there's only like a couple of restaurants in the entire United States that actually serve this. Almost every place that you go that says that they sell Wagyu, they don't. You know, if you ask to see the steak beforehand, they probably won't show it to you. It's probably bullshit. Okay, but I mean, this is clearly, I mean, that is, the marbling on that is fantastic. I know steak. I eat a lot of steak. I eat a lot of red meat. I, I don't even eat a lot of chicken, really. I mostly eat beef. And I can tell you that that is some good marbling. That is, that's going to be good. That's going to be tender. You know, my poor little wife, Rachel, uh, bless her heart. She just recently got braces. Here we are in our 40s. And we're still making corrections. You know, you never stop growing. Anyway, she got um, braces put on. And she's getting her teeth fixed after all these years. And she's having a heck of a time eating. And so I've been trying to buy really good premium cuts of uh, meat for her. And I cut it up into little tiny pieces for her and things. Because she's having a lot of a uh, dental work done. So uh, this is going to be a real treat for her. I want to try to get her on video if I can to see if I can get her to talk about it. But... Um, as I said, I eat a lot of steak. I go to a lot of steak houses. I, I have no problem going to a premium steak house and spending 200 bucks on a dinner because if I can get a really decent, fine cut of meat and a good meal and good trimmings, I'm all for it. And I've been to all the premium steak houses here in Dallas and most of the ones in Las Vegas, been to New York, been to LA, been all over the place. And I say this with total confidence. I don't think I've been anywhere in the world that makes a steak as good as mine. <laughs> and let me tell you, when people come over and they have it, they, they go, you know what, Bob, this is a good steak. And I have a couple of simple methods that I do that I think brings out the best flavor. There's no steak sauce. There's no special gimmicks. It's really simple. And I'm going to show you that next. Okay, let's fast forward to Sunday. Okay, here it is. Uh, it's a couple of days later. We had put the frozen steaks in the refrigerator to thaw on Wednesday evening and now it is Sunday evening so the the manufacturer seller instructions were to put the steaks into the refrigerator to slowly thaw over 72 hours over three days and uh, that worked out perfect so I got it delivered on Wednesday we're gonna have them here on Sunday then they want you to set them out and get them to room temperature they're not quite room temperature yet um, but they're, they're still in the packages here and uh, I'll, I'll bring the package over here close to the camera. You can kind of see, it says Mishima Reserve, four-star ribeye. This is not their highest grade. This is actually their lowest grade of ribeye uh, Wagyu. But I wanted to try it out and see how it was before I started spending the big bucks. And uh, you can see some of the marbling there. Very nice, very nice piece of meat here. Get this one out here. Get it flat so you can see it. Check that out. I mean, look at that. So you can imagine how good the higher grade is. They have a, a five star and a premium. Looks very good. After I cut it open, I'll uh, I'll bring the camera over and get a good close up of it. So I'm just going to use some uh, kitchen shears to open it up, putting it in a stainless steel pan that I use to. Uh, Hold my meats. I gotta say, it looks good out of the package. This is what we do every Sunday. We, we have a nice uh, steak day. Sunday is our steak day. And uh, it's kind of repetitive, but it's what I like to do. Oh yeah, those are nice. So, and I always pair my meats with the, what I call the Holy Trinity. You got 
onions, bell peppers, multicolored bell peppers, mushrooms, and then uh, garlic and some olive oil. All right, we'll show you a good close up of this. Okay, here's a good close up of the meat. Maybe we'll try the other side, see how it, how it looks. Oh yes, that looks, that just looks amazing. Wow, you can really, really see the marbling. You can tell that that's not regular ribeye if you know what you're looking at. Man, this is gonna be awesome. So all I, all I put on uh, my steaks is a little bit of fresh ground pepper. This is sort of a blend of pepper. This is like a, a powered uh, pepper shaker. And I think I can put a link to where you get these in the description if you're looking for one. Look how cool that is. For your lazy one-handed people. And uh, I like to use the pink Himalayan salt. And that's, that's all I'm going to do to it. Now I'll put that on both sides. Usually on my regular ribeye steaks, my lower grade ribeye steaks, I'll put onion powder on. I'm not going to put it on this one because I won't really want the natural flavor to come through. So uh, let's get this stuff ready to go out on the grill. Anyway, so I'm just gonna put just a little dab of oil here. By the way, I, I get this from Costco, and this is the, the they've done a lot of olive oil testing of all the fake olive oils that are out there, and they found that the, some of the Costco olive oil is some of the best. All right, here's our Wagyu ribeyes. We're gonna just flat grill them. Wow. Oh wow, that looks amazing. Oh, so beautiful. Got a nice, nice crust on there. So nice. These vegetables look about done too. I don't like to mess with uh, the meat too much. Just gonna let it cook there. And uh, I'll monitor the temperature. A lot of guys, give me smack but poking into the meat but I use this professional chef's thermometer shows it's like 80 degrees standing over this grill right now now I can see it's pink so I know that the interior of that is certain temperature I, I don't need to stick it because I can see and this might be a matter of fact I'm gonna pull the temperature down on this just a tad And I'd say these vegetables are probably ready to rock. Some people don't like them as done as I do. I like them, I love to get the char, the burn on them, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those. Now, if I didn't mention it already, I'm using my uh, Blackstone uh, stainless steel 36 inch grill. These are awesome. The lid I made myself. I was going to go into business selling these lids, but the problem is I'd have to sell this lid for like two, three hundred bucks in order to make a profit. And the whole grill is two or three hundred bucks. So I don't think people would pay for it. But it was a finely made lid. This is hot, let me tell you, it's burning my little fingers. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these again like hamburgers, look at that. 
But the, oh man, the crust, ooh, so all that pepper and the salt has been burned on there. Ooh, it's gonna be so good. I decided to throw one of these little burger toppers on there for just a minute and try to get a little bit of oven action going on in there. Get the heat up a little bit all around it. Okay, this is how I have it plated. Um, I use this large, this is like a turkey platter and uh, you know, like a, a big roast platter. And um, I like to spread everything out Put my grilled vegetables down. Got some nice uh, bird's eye sweet peas. These are Heinz beans imported from England. The, you know, blue label canned beans, a nice potato with some, some uh, five year reserve cheese and some sour cream and uh, some chef chamois garlic butter. It's my favorite. And of course the steak. So let's, um, let's cut this thing open and uh, see what's doing in there. Wow. Now I like I like my steak a little bit rare. And um that wow. Let me see if I can uh zoom in on that a little bit. Now that might be a little rare for some of you. And I don't blame you. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna grab my uh It's cooled down to about 128. It was about 135 earlier. So that's pretty rare. Let's try it out. Cut off a little piece of this here. Very fatty piece. Wow. fat is very buttery, very tender. Man, let me try a little piece of this over here. Juicy. You look good. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, it's good. good well you know it's pretty hard to describe how a steak tastes how it's tender tenderness is its texture its flavor I can tell you it's very good and there's probably a couple different ways I could have cooked this that I'm sure a lot of chefs are gonna be out there and saying you should have done this you should have done that and I'll practice with all of those but I wanted to just do a regular old plain old pan fry on it on a griddle and see how that came out. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty gosh darn awesome. I'm not complaining, not even a little bit. So Mishima Reserve uh, mail order Wagyu steak is pretty gosh darn good. I gotta tell you, uh, I'm loving it. So we'll follow up and we'll do more of these. And um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my videos and here's the next one coming up.